going to see in 2019 is in 2017 and 2018, we very much had the march of the service office provider. And I think 2019 is going to be the year that the big traditional property companies start to fight back. And I think we'll see them entering the same sort of sector, but in a slightly different way. So whereas the WeWorks and the office groups are offering pure service office deals, I think we'll see a lot more flexibility within a more traditional lease structure we're going to see more floor-by-floor -floor leasing, we're going to see more break rights, we're going to see shorter terms, we're going to see a lot more flexibility given to occupiers within the security of the lease rather than the relative insecurity of a service office agreement. I think also in office design you're going to see a change as, as the big um, REITs are taking on the uh, flexible office providers, they're going to have to provide more of the services you can normally see in a, um, the uh, co-working spaces such as cafes, breakout areas, um, soft centres for tenants. So I think there's going to be a design change as well, but you'll find more of a hybrid physically between the buildings, not just in terms of your leasing, etc. It's a lot easier to say than to do, but, but I would say to people at the moment, try and look through all the political turmoil that's going on at the moment and not to let that cloud your judgments because often in uncertain times, if you strike, say, a pre-let deal, um, you get a really good deal. And by the time it comes to occupying the building in two or three years' time, that deal could look even better. So I think I, think I would say look, look at the long term, don't look at the short term. I think linked to that, the importance of office space and the area around it in terms of attracting the best talent is going to remain really key. So along with the site very we're taking the pre-lets in the great spaces not to forget how important that will be to maintain the, the best workforce and how maybe experimenting with what your building can do and what could offer to your employees uh, a little bit and being prepared to slightly push the boundaries. Technology is always a big issue and um, we have to bear in mind that we're negotiating leases that are going to last 10, 15, even 20 years. Um, I'm old enough to remember when satellite dishes first came out and landlords were refusing consent to put them on the outside of buildings because they were an external change and no one had envisaged that uh, when drafting the leases. And now I think it's very difficult to do, but to the extent we can try and envisage what may be coming down the technological path, we should, we should try and cover that as best we can. 5G is, is the obvious immediate example, but there's going to be a lot more than that in the future. I think there's going to be an increasing focus on uh, wellness in buildings. It's an area that is actually quite technical. I think BCO did a detailed report on it uh, last year and um, bringing together various strands of exactly, you know, I think there's 55 or something areas that need to be looked at in order to, to ascertain the, the wellbeing well being rating of the building. So I think that's going to be really key and it's part of the whole creating the space and attracting talent and actually using buildings to to the benefit of the business and one's workforce. I think it's well being well, wellness in buildings.